Hi everyone, welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. I'm Dr. Amy, your host, and I'm really excited to talk to you about embryos. I do consults for patients all over the country and world, and what I'm still surprised about are the things that people don't know that they can ask for, and that's information about your embryos. Your embryos are the most precious thing to you. You work so hard for them, so I want you to know what questions to ask. So that's why I came up with this brilliant, well, I'm obviously biased, mnemonic called embryo diamonds. This is a very simple, easy way for you to talk to your doctor so that you are sure to find out every single thing about your embryos and you won't miss a thing. So I'm going to go through each of these letters now. So the first thing is what day is your embryo? Is it a day two? Is it a day three? Is it a day five? Was it transferred as a day three? Was it frozen as a day five or day six? Very important information for you to know. Why? because that will guide you as far as the pregnancy chance per embryo. And that's really important for you to know so that later on you'll know, will these embryos help me reach my goals? The I in diamonds is implantation rate. Just like diamonds, embryos get scores. You need to know those scores. Those scores given by your doctor, and every lab is a little bit different as far as the scores, will help determine the implantation rate per embryo. So not all embryos are gonna be the same just like not all diamonds are the same. So in order for you to know the success rate per embryo, and if you have enough embryos for the family size that you want, you really need to know the scores and the implantation rate. The next thing is this, which embryo is abnormal? And the thing is that you may not be doing genetic testing on your embryos, so you may not know the answer to this question, but it's really important to know the power of genetic testing and make a decision that's right for you as far as whether you want to do it or not. Abnormal embryos or embryos that don't have normal chromosomes cannot turn into a healthy pregnancy for the most part, but have a really healthy, good discussion with your doctor about this first. Now the M part, a little bit controversial, but it's super important for you to have full transparency with your doctor about what is a mosaic embryo and what is mosaicism. ASRM came out with a statement this summer and I was so excited to see it about how important it is for every fertility clinic to have a protocol for reporting mosaics and transferring mosaics and the patient should know. It's not 100% yet. I know for a fact, because again, I talk to you guys over social media and through the consults that I do, that still patients aren't getting this very important information. And why? It's because I have so many beautiful mosaic embryos. Just because an embryo is mosaic doesn't mean that it will not turn into a healthy pregnancy. It's very important for you to do a post-test consult with a genetic testing company that's affiliated with the company that did the testing for you a post-test consult also with a geneticist that's not affiliated with that testing company or your clinic. These are the recommendations that I make for my patients and that's why I want you to know what's possible for you to do as well. Now we get to the O, official reports. I'm so surprised still to this day that people don't know that they can ask for them. They're not given the reports. When I go through an IVF cycle with my patient, no matter what the outcome, I always do something called a post-test consult. During this consult, I'm reviewing all my patients' official reports with them and giving them copies at the same time. And we're reviewing them and going through them line by line. Again, you worked so hard for these embryos. It's extremely important for me for you to learn from the experiences that you've had, especially if the experiences didn't turn into a healthy pregnancy, so that you can be more informed about what your fertility diagnosis is and what you should do from here. So here are the official reports you may want to consider asking for. Your embryology report. This report will have the embryo quality listed, and then you can have that healthy discussion about the implantation rate per embryo based on the quality. Now you want the genetic report and you want to know where my embryo screen for mosaicism and do that post-test consult as well with the genetic counselor. You want your ultrasound reports. If you're a patient in my practice after each embryo, or I should say after each ultrasound, I'm ooing and aahing over your follicles. And seriously, when I'm doing an ultrasound, I see those eggs as sparkling on the screen. And I give my patients their ultrasound reports if they want them. I know that not all clinics do that. I know that not all doctors scan their own, pa own patients, and that's still okay. But asking for your ultrasound reports is one way for you to be more knowledgeable and in control of something that's certainly completely out of our control. And that's what goes on with our eggs after they're retrieved. The next thing you might want to request is your stimulation sheet. 
I also, with each update, hand my patients their stimulation sheet. And sometimes patients are just given an email as to what to do next and they don't get that complete sheet. Sometimes looking at that sheet can be very helpful as far as learning from your experience and then deciding what you should do next. And the last but not least thing that you need to know, semen analysis. What was your sperm quality on the day of the egg retrieval? Get that report. Very important to have that in writing. And when you ask for it, I should tell you that sometimes they say, well, I don't do a complete analysis, and that's true. But we do get volume, concentration, motility, and these numbers can sometimes be helpful. The N now is which embryo is normal. And when I say normal, it is very important for me to point out that all we can look at when it comes to embryos and their genetics when we do PGTA is which embryo has normal chromosomes. We can't tell you if your baby is going to be normal. I mean, are any of us really normal at the end of the day? <laughs> I had that discussion with my sister quite a bit. <sighs> I digress. But my point is this. PGT can help you determine only if an embryo has normal chromosomes, but not if your baby will truly be what we determine as normal, because certainly we all have our own quirks and we can't rule out everything like things related to, let's say, ADD, ADHD, autism, and other things like birth defects. So the D of diamonds, the second D I should say, is dreams come true. Before you move on to an embryo transfer, I want you to ask yourself this. Will the embryos I have right now help me reach my family size goals and fulfill my dreams of family? And if the answer is no, take a pause, talk to your doctor and go back and say, this is what I want. What is it going to take to get that? I'm certainly willing to do it. And then go on from there. I hear stories of patients who go through IVF and they do a transfer and then they're ready to have a baby two years later and they wish that they had this information. So that's why I'm giving it to you so you know what questions to ask and you know exactly how to ask it so that you're more informed as a fertility patient. And of course, I can't finish this without talking about sperm because as you guys know, you've heard me say this before, I feel like we forget that it takes two to tango and sperm is so important. It's 50% of the embryo. Each embryo is an egg and a sperm cell. And when you ask for the sperm report or semen analysis from your embryology report, it should be there, and you talk to your doctor, you want to ask, was the sperm the way you want it to be? Was it good? Next time, should we consider additional procedures? Do we need to do extra testing like a sperm DNA fragmentation test? Would PIXI or Zymote help? And sometimes we even do testicular extraction or testing of sperm. So I really hope you guys learned from my embryo diamonds and maybe one day I'll come out with my own jewelry line. But for now, I want to keep seeing your embryo sparkle and I want to make sure you guys are as informed as possible. Thank you for listening and I can't wait to see you guys in class. If you haven't joined my Egg Whisperer school, please do. I don't try to be funny. I am funny and I'm way funnier in class too. So please join me. See you soon.